We're going to first talk a bit about 3D. 3D is a very um, vast world. You can create scenes with thousands or millions of objects. When you think about films or video games, you have entire worlds built in 3D. In Procreate, 3D is very much simplified. We're not talking about an entire world, like in a video game or in a movie. We are going to mostly use a single object. So what we're going to do in Procreate today, think of it as we're going to paint a figurine, right? Maybe you've played Dungeon Dragon or War, Warhammer 40,000. You know, you had these little plastic or lead um, figurines. Some artists are painting those figurines with an incredible amount of detail, uh, all sorts of nice colors, and they put the dust in and all these kind of scratches. And this is exactly what we are going to do in, uh, in Procreate here. First, we're going to look at how we can navigate around our uh, 3D object. Basically, inside of Procreate, when you use only one finger to drag, you're going to spin your object around. Now you see that you have an arbitrary point of rotation around which we are going to orbit. And this point is being defined um, by the use of a two-finger touch. So if I use two fingers and I drag or zoom, now Procreate is going to look at where is the point in the middle of my two fingers, and this is going to be the new orbiting point. So here, I'm in the center of the object, but if I zoom in on its face here, on its nose, you're going to see that when I rotate around, this is where the orbit is. Let's now have a look at the main differences between a classic Procreate file and a 3D Procreate file. First, when we go in the preferences here, in the actions, we have a new icon called 3D here. And the first item is the one we're going to look at. It's called Show 2D Texture. So we're going to enable this. And here, whoa, what's going on here? We see our dragon, but it looks like a carpet. This is the version of the 3D object completely unwrapped. This is very important to understand this. When we paint on a 3D object, basically we paint on a texture that is wrapped around it. This is the unwrapped texture that is around this object. I'm going to show you something pretty cool that I've prepared for you here. So this is not a Procreate feature, but it's something that I've exported for you. I'm going to show you the 3D mesh here. So this is the actual polygons that I've painted into the texture here. And if we look again, so we're going to do the actions. We go into 3D and go into show 2D texture. And we're going to see here, this is how the mesh is being unwrapped. So we can see the two eyes. We can see here the nose there, we can see the mouse here. This is the underneath of the wing. This is the top of the wing. This is all its spine and the tail. So when we're going to be painting on this object, we're going to be painting on that 2D texture. Now, another thing that is new in the 3D files, if we look at our layers up close, if you open one, any of them, let's take, for example, the base color here you can see that on the layers, you have the same little 3D box icon there. So I'm going to tap on this guy, and we see that it opens three sub-layers. One is for color, one is for roughness, one is for metallic. So in order to show you what these sub-layers, color, roughness, and metallic uh, do, uh, we're going to open our blank dragon, and we're going to start painting on it, finally. So we're going to start a new layer, I'm going to press that plus here. I'm going to rename that real quick. Base color. There we go. And we're going to take a standard brush. Uh, let's go to airbrushing. Let's take a medium brush, for example. And we're going to take a nice and very vivid color. I've got a bright red here. When I'm painting on this object, you can see I'm painting some red paint directly on its face here. What did it do? Automatically, the color, the roughness, and the metallic sublayers have been filled. We can see that the color has been filled with red. So obviously, the data, all the pixels in there are in RGB, right? So it's all color in there. Now, roughness and metallic are more like data layer. They are only black and white. In roughness, the darker it will be, uh, the glossier the material is going to be. And in metallic, 
if it's completely black, it's non-metallic, and if it's completely white, it's going to be very metallic. So why is that? Well, in order to understand this, we are going to have a look at the brushes. And when we look at the brushes, if we take our medium brush, in the 3D version of a Procreate file, in the brush setup here, we have here, yet again, a little cube icon. And this is new, this is specific to the 3D Procreate files. And in this, we have two sub-properties, which is metallic and which is roughness. What we are looking at uh, right now is the amount here. The amount of metallic is at zero, so it's called non-metallic. And the amount of roughness is at 50. And what does it mean is that when we are painting, we are painting with a paint that is basically not too glossy and not too matte. Let's erase this color there. So I'm going to use three fingers and shake around the screen. But this time, we're going to go back to our brush and we're going to put our amount of roughness, let's say about 15 or 20. And now we should see a little bit more of shininess. Yeah, you see like on its face here, we can see that our material now is completely shiny. And if we look on the layer here, the sub-layer here, we can see that the roughness here is now a dark gray. So let's have a look at this red and let's turn it into a metallic red. So still in our brush, in the material section, in the metallic section, this time we're going to put the metallic amount to the maximum. And we can see here already, it looks like we're painting chrome. I remove the metallic, now we're painting white. We can have a nice preview here already anyway. So if I take red, this is non-metallic red, but glossy. Let's put some metallic all the way up. Now we can see we have like a, almost like a Christmas ball. And let's have a look at how it behaves on our dragon. So with three fingers, I'm going to shake across the screen. So I'm selecting our base color layer and I'm going to paint directly on it. And now, yay, we have our red metallic dragon paint. You see, I was painting with the base color selected, but you can also, if you tap on it on the cube ones, you can, if you want, only paint on a selected sub layer. You can call them sub layer, we can call them different channels. So what happens if I erase everything, but only on the color? And I completely cleared the color sub channel. So all the red is gone, but the information about this area being completely metallic has stayed, right? So now we have this kind of chrome dragon. And now if we select metallic, I'm going to use my three fingers and shake them to clear the area. Now all the metallic information is gone. Now we only have the roughness information there. We can double check that. You can see that this is empty, this is empty, but we still have that slightly darker roughness, which makes this area a little bit shinier. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all of our latest videos.